I've gone on the record and said that the M1 MacBook Air is the best computer I have ever owned. So this is a quick performance update after more than two and a half years of daily use. Now one of the most tangible ways it feels like your computer is getting old is the amount of time it takes for it to start up and shut down. Now I'm running the latest release of macOS Monterey. And in general, I don't like running the most recent operating system from Apple because I find that they tend to be buggy and they really need time to stabilize and really perform that the way it's supposed to. So I'm running Monterey and I can say that after loading all of my programs and applications, it really hasn't slowed down in terms of startup and shutdown. I consider myself to be a moderate user. The only, the most demanding program I run is Final Cut Pro. And I don't do anything really crazy with it. I just shoot footage from my iPhone 12. I imported it. And as you can see from my final set of videos, the final output, I really only include a graphic or some B-roll that I'll download from YouTube. Aside from that, I know I'm not the most demanding user. And the most, um, the thing that really takes up the most time is exporting. So I've seen the performance graphs and the benchmarks comparing the standard M1 Air, which is what I have, to say something like the M1 or the M2 MacBook Pros. And I can see that the M1 Air is showing its age. However, as I said, for what I do with it, it really doesn't matter. So that's how it's doing in terms of performance and startup and shutdown. The other thing to consider is the amount of RAM and disk space available to you. Now my M1 Air has been upgraded with one terabyte of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. And even when I'm doing a complicated edit by my standards, I'll have about 10 or 12 Chrome tabs open. I'll have Audacity in the background running for voiceovers. I may have to access my, my music library. So if I'm doing a lot of things, even with Final Cut Pro open, I'll only use about 10 or 11 gigabytes of RAM at the most. But that only occurs when I'm doing the most complicated edits for my videos. Now, I bought my mom a refurbished base model M1 MacBook Air a couple years ago. So it has 256 gigabytes of storage and half the amount of RAM at eight gigabytes. And I can tell you that if I were in a pinch, I would be able to use that computer to edit 4K 60 footage in Final Cut Pro. I wouldn't be able to have as many things open, but I know if I just had to get an edit done for whatever reason on a base model M1 MacBook Air, I know it won't let me down. So in terms of continued performance over time, that is something that is really uh, appealing and powerful about Apple Silicon and how well Apple optimized the M1 chip. In terms of stability, I don't think I've had a single kernel panic in the two and a half years I've been using this system. And the reason why is because macOS is based on the Unix Core and Foundation. And Unix is an operating system that goes back more than 40 years. So they inherited the stability of that really small microkernel incorporated into the OS. And as a result, system-wide, it is a very system, uh, stable system. The only time you're really going to run into trouble is if in, uh, individual applications start to crash. For example, there's been a lot of reports that the recent updates to Final Cut Pro have been really crashy and buggy. But aside from that, the entire operating system itself is rock solid and you really don't have to worry about the system just going down on you. Finally, there's connectivity. The M1 MacBook Air supports Wi-Fi 6, but not Wi-Fi 6E. For me, that's not really an issue because my internet connection is 300 up and 300 down. Also, I have a Wi-Fi mesh system throughout my home, so I'm able to get the full bandwidth throughout my house. Now, if you're running a gigabit connection or higher, then it does make sense to get Wi-Fi 6E. However, I believe that for most households, Wi-Fi 6 is just going to be fine. And when it comes to display output and the USB-C Thunderbolt ports, that is where it kind of lets you down because the M1 MacBook Air is only going to be able to support one external monitor. Whereas if you got the M1 MacBook Pro or, or later, you'd be able to support up to, I believe, three external monitors. So that's just one area that's lacking. If you really want to use dual displays on the M1 Air, you won't be able to do it. So the best you have right now is the built-in screen and the uh, external monitor that you have hooked up. But the controller itself is very fast. It supports Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4. And because of that, you do get full speed across the ports. And overall, that's not going to be an issue. So those are just my thoughts on the performance of the M1 Air. 
Keep that in mind the next time you're thinking about buying a computer because the M2 MacBook Air is a really nice system. However, if you look at it in terms of performance and speed, I think it's a better idea to save the money and get the M1 Air. Never buy it full price. It's up on Amazon. It's very often on sale and you can get a brand new M1 MacBook Air for $750. And I see it a lot happen on either Costco or Amazon. Whereas the M2 MacBook Air hasn't really gone down in price yet. And I think in terms of compare of performance and everyday use between the two systems, I really don't think you're gonna be telling the difference unless you're really pushing your MacBook and you wanna use it for really professional programs and applications. So those are my thoughts. That's the performance update and that's about it. Peace.